All right. Uh, look, first up this morning, though, I want to talk, and I'll talk to someone who's probably in a good mood because he's a national MP, um, and he's voiced some concern over the underreporting of gang members who live in state housing, in emergency housing. Uh, he is the MP for Rotorua, which has got, or well, certainly has hit the headlines, in terms of being a place where many of the social dis-ease, not disease, the social dis-ease the country is experiencing is there for all to see. Rotorua has become the pin-up uh, place for, I'll, I'll be honest, nutters on the streets for the failings of our social welfare system, uh, maybe for the inequities of our society. Um, but Todd McClay has asked Police Minister Chris Hipkins if police are informed of how many gang-affiliated people live in emergency housing. And I'll be honest, the reason I'm into this story is you've heard me, well, you've heard me speak, I was going to say rave, but speak forcefully about the terrible state of affairs in central Wellington where former student hostels and backpackers have been turned into emergency accommodation and it would seem to me half the people uh, in the, that accommodation are crazy and the other half are borderline criminal and that does not create a great vibe in central Wellington or indeed right outside the front door of the platform studios here in Manor Street. So without further ado, we are joined by National MP uh, Todd McClay. <coughs> Todd Nice to have you uh, on the platform. How are you? Sean, good morning. Great to see you and talk to you. Thank oh. you for having me on. All right. Um, uh, firstly, uh, to the party, that's a pretty good result there in Hamilton West you got, wasn't it? it yes, it is. Uh, it is a pleasing result. Uh, Tama and the team worked incredibly hard. Uh, I went in and out a few times to help out. Uh, I had a lot of volunteers from Rotorua who were keen to come and help. Uh, you know, there's a good team on the ground <coughs> there. But it is very, very pleasing for him. He'll be heading to Wellington. Look, look, I think what you've seen in Hamilton West is the same as the feeling that's growing around the rest of the country. There's not enough progress. There's probably far too many excuses, too many press releases. And in that electorate, as with mine, law and order and crime and the cost of living and just how hard it's become for everyday hardworking New Zealanders is why I think you've seen that result. All right. Um, well, let's move on then to this issue of Social and, in particular, emergency housing. Yeah. And the fact that it seems to have, not just in Rotorua, Todd, but everywhere, gone horribly, horribly wrong during COVID. Yeah, um, you're right. Uh, Rotorua, I think, has been very much in the, the minds of much of the public and, uh, you know, through the, the media and the reporting. You know, Sean, we're 1.5% of the population we now have 10% of the country's homelessness in and out of our motels and social housing. And it's because the government, in not knowing what to do, I suppose, have really been shipping or encouraging or helping people to go to Rotorua because there are motels there. And of course, as a result of that, most of the you know social harm and other things that goes with when you dump people in motels and actually don't do so anything I, I else. Just wanted, I, I just want to check this. Rotorua has 10% of the country's homeless. 10% of the that's right. 10 of the country's homelessness in, in emergency housing and motels. One and a half percent of the population. It wasn't there uh, before COVID. Uh, yes, there was a challenge as a result of COVID that we had to deal with, but it wasn't the vast numbers now. So the the government's been shipping people in and using Rotorua as a dumping uh, uh, ground. In fact, there was a uh, sorry, I just finished. There was yeah. an um, there was a cabinet paper that said they're sort of using Rotorua as a trial to see if it can work well there, and maybe they can do it elsewhere. Amazing they didn't do it in Queenstown, but the Queenstown folk <laughs> too much dough um, yeah. to let that go. That is remarkable, but when one thinks about it, totally and utterly expected in that the government did not commit to building even temporary uh, quarantine facilities, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it threw a whole lot of the MIQ facilities were down in Rotorua. Would just seem crazy, to be frank, to me, to Sully what we're still going to, and you'd hope, would come back and as the jewels and the crowns of our overseas tourism destinations. What, Absolutely. I, I'm just wondering, what impact has that had on Rotorua as a destination for tourists as that industry tries to gear up again? 
Yeah. Well, look, I want to start by saying Rotorua is still a great place to come. There's a lot to do there. Uh, and, uh, you know, fundamentally it hasn't changed. But uh, the perception of Rotorua and public safety is certainly different than it was before the government started dumping people there. And secondly, it is the reality that in effect in many of the areas now people are not safer. We're starting to see visitors international come back, which is a good thing, but they're not staying overnight. They're staying in other places and doing day trips. And and I suppose what that means is for accommodation providers who have chosen not to take on emergency housing or the bars and the restaurants who, you know, in the evenings would normally be filled, bustling to fill, uh, they're doing it harder than they should, certainly harder than other areas like Queenstown. So there's a lot of work to be done mm. and the work can only start when we know exactly what the government's doing and that's why it's so very deeply disappointing that Chris Hiskins is making excuses and saying don't know how many gang members are in these motels or what's going on and it would take too much gang effort members or police or gang resource affiliates to find out. Or gang affiliates as well. That's right. It's, yeah, so, so that's right. It's gang members or those associated with gangs. That's right. Mm. All right. Um... But there's no law against a gang member or a gang affiliate receiving the support of the government through the social welfare system. No, and I, I suppose many of them do. Um, but the issue here is that we know that whenever there are gang members present, they're not out being benevolent, delivering Christmas presents to the, the needy in our community. They cause harm. And um, there, there's, um, you know, more than anecdotal evidence of increase of harm as a result of gang presence and gang membership around the area. So, so what I, I, um, there's a group of uh, citizens came together, they formed a, a group, and they've challenged through the courts the right for the government to take these motels and uh, change uh, their use to be permanent. You, you need to know that the government has been either buying or taking uh, five-year contracts with motels to provide emergency housing in Rotorua. They said we don't, this local group of people said they don't think that's right and it shouldn't happen and they challenged challenged the use of these motels through the legal system. Yeah, they put a lot right. of OIAs to the... Yeah. Is that on the argument that they were given their resource content or to operate as motels, not to operate as social housing um, That's right. providers? That's right. Yeah. So, uh, so a motel has a consent for allowing people to stay up to 30 days. It's not permanent accommodation, and therefore you need another consent. And so it was found um, when the council was pushed, it was found that the, found that the government's use of these motels was illegal. They didn't have the proper consents for it. So the government then started purchasing, getting longer to purchasing motels uh, directly, getting longer term leases up to five years and sought a change to the resource consent and local people uh, stood opposed to that. Um, so, so what uh, we found in that, there's this group put in a lot of OAAs to get information about the harm that was being done, the effect, crime, these sorts of things. And largely the ministries came back and said, we won't be able to provide this information to you for some months. And coincidentally, or extremely worryingly, the information wouldn't be available until after the hearings had been completed. Yeah. I therefore started putting in uh, um, written questions to ministers who must reply within seven days. And we started to get some information, but gee, did we get quite some runaround, which virtually, you know, to paraphrase said, don't know, uh, can't find out, nobody's told us about any of these things, and it would take too much time to ask to, to get the information. And I just think that's unacceptable. Mm. Todd, how many people, we talked about this 10% of the homeless in New Zealand in Rotorua, uh, you've got one, one and a half percent of the actual population, so it's disproportionate. How many of those people are local? Um, a very small number is the answer. Um, um, again, in the early days when we were questioning the government over this, they were saying, no, everybody is from Rotorua. And Jacinda Ardern turned up to Rotorua and said, no, no, she's informed everyone's from Rotorua. As we kept uh, digging away at it, and the, the Daily Post locally actually did a very good job. They didn't give up and just accept the platitudes offered by Labour. <clears throat> we got down to a figure of at least 40% from outside of Rotorua. Wow. But, Sean, I think it's much higher than that. When I talk to the policemen and women in Rotorua who attend these motels all the time, they say the last 
address given is hardly ever Rotorua. And it's as simple as this. Word gets around. If you go to Rotorua and you can go to a motel and stay there for free, people start flocking there. You know, if the signal is you go to Rotorua and you won't be put in a motel, they won't go there. But there are also examples of in Wellington, people going to MSD and saying, I'm homeless. And they say, if you find a motel to stay in, we'll give you money to get there. And they're paying people to travel around the country, in this case, mainly to Rotorua. How many people, what's the actual number of people in Rotorua homeless? Well, what does that yep. 10% represent as a number? Of, of, the, of the Rotorua population? Well, no, no. How, in, many, in how many people are how there? Many how are many there? homeless people are there yeah. in Rotorua so by number? I don't have an exact figure now, but, but a few months ago when we last got some information from the government, it was some thousands of people there. You know, there were 67 well, motels with okay. homeless people so in there. So was it 1,000, 2,000, 3,000? Oh, so so at, its peak, at its peak, about 3,000 was the last number we got, but it wasn't the complete picture. Okay, and that is... That has a significant impact on a town like Rotorua. Yeah. There's no way yeah, it, really it can't. Does. And most of these people unemployed or not? Or all of them? Well, I, I would imagine very few of them are employed, yeah. yeah. Um, there's, no, there's no work being done to sort of get them into the... To give you an example, on Fenton Street, which really is the crown of yeah. Rotorua, it's where all the motels are, you drive yep. in there, there's, uh, there's um, a, a, a restaurant along there surrounded by homelessness. He said it's had a huge impact upon his custom as people come and ask for food or money or beg or yeah. just take things yeah. off the tables yeah. and so on. And what's happened here in central Wellington is they have formed into sort of, I'm sorry, street gangs of people who hang out, they have their regular begging spots and it's like they work on a roster. Um, a large number of people here in Wellington, from my personal observation, need serious psychiatric help. And I talked actually, though the government has just moved to close it, uh, to someone who had visited for various reasons uh, as part of her job what are called the Dixon Street Flats in Wellington and had noticed that they smelt appalling and the security guard on these flats said, go and talk to the cleaner. And she went and talked to the cleaner and the cleaner says, I'm only contracted to clean twice a week, but the problem is that people defecate in the hallways here and urinate in the mm. hallways. And this person I was talking to said, well, why? And she said, well, because they're mentally unwell. They are crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. there's nowhere else to put them. A and it seems to me we have, Todd, and, and your, the people of your electorate uh, are copying it. I would say people in central Wellington are, are copying it. And I've had reports from else elsewhere around the country that most uh, significant towns or urban conurbations now have these areas that have been populated um, and, and it's not the people that's the problem, it's the concentration and the policy, uh, yeah. areas that become yeah. no-go zones. It sounds yeah. to me like this is an urgent problem, Todd. This isn't just about playing politics. This is about the livelihoods of, of, of citizens. And actually, it's also not good for these individuals who are being put into, well, for want of word, better words, motel ghettos. Yeah, and, that, and that's what's happening. The area is becoming ghettoised, and I agree with you completely. Look, if you put the politics aside, well, well for a moment, the politics is stop using Rotor as a dumping ground and do your job properly and help these people. Don't just shift it around the country and waste taxpayers', taxpayers money. But actually, I talk to as many mums with kids in the motels who desperately need help, who are as appalled and as worried because they themselves become victims of the gang members and the other you know, social harm that is yeah. congregated gating there. To give an example, it's almost the same as what you've just said. There's one motel on Fenton Street that the government took and uh, uh, prisoners who had mental health and drug addiction problems were placed in there and congregated together. In effect, uh, we got that closed down. Number one, you, sh you know, dumping people like that there with no real obvious help or assistance is just a recipe for more, more harm to them and the others around them. But at the same time, the building had been condemned for earthquake and fireproofing. It was just dangerous. And the government sort of said, well, it's not our problem. We've just signed the contract. Look, ultimately, there is a lot going wrong here. Um, we had a public meeting a few weeks ago, about 500 local people in the area turned up 
And they were appalled and angry and frustrated and disappointed at what the government was doing. But they didn't say just throw these people out. They said, actually, Kyangalura is one of the worst landlords in the country. You have an obligation to us, the neighbours, but the people that you're housing or you're meant to be helping, and will they have no faith that that is, is going on? Mm. And so, you know, I'm quite concerned and fearful. If you think about it, there are a lot of children in these motels who yeah. desperately need and deserve our assistance. Mm. But if they are dump their year upon year upon year, they too as victims will become statistics and not the right type of statistic yeah, that we, feels, we need. Yeah, it feels wrong, it feels unhealthy, it doesn't feel caring, it feels actually callous. What? And there seems an ever-increasing likelihood that National may form the bulk of the next government. Well, what the hell are you guys going to do? What, what would you do differently? Yeah. So, so the, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to stop filling the motels up. And so you put a cap and sinking lid in. And, and what that means is that, uh, number one, no more people in. And number two, as they leave, the numbers come down. That sends the signal that actually the long-term solution is not having people in motels. It's the first thing. The second thing you've got to do then is the government talks a lot about wraparound service, but actually it is really just lip service. They're not doing anything at all. You know, for many of these people, they're going to have quite significant uh, social problems and you need to focus on on fixing those the third thing you've got to do is you move the motels back to a commercial rent and so at the moment you know they're paying two to three thousand dollars a week for these gang members in some cases to be in motels right if you bring that back down to a commercial uh, rent then actually what happens is those motels uh, actually in many cases will decide not to take the people in. Oh, and, so you're you know, telling we'll me the, 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 that social welfare, that the government is outbidding what would be a normal commercial Oh, rate. completely. Jeez. Absolutely. I mean, I had a lady come to me and said that on the first day of every month, she has $200,000 put into her bank account where the people are staying there or not. Now, most of the time that they are, every month at the beginning, that's a lot of money. And yep. so actually for a lot of these motels, it's, well, you know, take the money from the government or go and fight it out. Okay, so you, you so stop the motels being used, choice. but where are you going to put the people? Yeah. Yeah, so then, then what you've got to do is you've got to repatriate the people back to where they've come from, not just pop them on a bus and send them off, but take it take it this way. You know, we have quite a lot of people that have turned up from Fokitani. They have no support base. They now have no families. They have nothing going on there. They have been promised housing, uh, uh, you know, not just temporary accommodation by this government, but you do it back there. You don't then all of a sudden say, you've got a big problem in the road, or let's try and build thousands and thousands of houses there because, one, this government can't build houses. They've proven that, and two, it actually just takes so long. You will then get down to the situation where you have just the number of people that actually are Rotorua based, have a connection of, to Rotorua, and then we can deal with that much more easily. But at the moment, every time the government builds social housing, you know, half of the people come from Rotorua, the other half they're bringing from around the region, and then they're bringing more people from around the region to fill the motels up again. So it's a never-ending problem that actually will only get worse unless there's some serious uh, decisions made. Does anyone in Rotorua disagree with you that this is a problem? Is there anyone in Rotorua who says, what a grand thing we're doing? Well, there are some of the people involved with the trust that are making an exorbitant amount of money out of this who actually see another way, which is to continue doing what they're doing. And in a few cases, they're very well-meaning and they are working very, very hard. But in essence, it's become a money-go-round. And if you are involved in this... You know, I was talking with Salvation Army a little while ago and, and you know, they're, they're actually a, a, an organisation I have a lot of respect for. Mm. They too are saying the solution is not just to continue to dump people here but we also can't throw them out on the street. And so, so I agree with them because actually that would make the situation worse. But no, uh, Rotorua now has come to the position after three years of this of saying enough's enough, we want our town back. There are people in our community that desperately need help but we can't help them when we're inundated with thousands of people around the country because the government wants to use Rotorua as a dumping ground for the homeless problem, and it was a very large part, I'm sorry, they've created. Yeah, and I must admit, I feel personally um, the same about Wellington and downtown Wellington, yeah. I know. In well, you're right problems. that Wellington has Hamilton. changed around some areas of the CBD as yeah. you're walking around. You do see quite a significant change there, uh, as you do in other areas. 
and it is often where that emergency accommodation is. Here's the thing about an emergency, right? It's a bit like Labour government. You do things in emergency quickly to fix them. You don't just do it because it's easy. Well, we've seen that in Parliament when they go into urgency, right? Uh, that's just to, to do the work they haven't done. If it's emergency housing, you deal with it because it's emergency, but then you have to fix it. You can't leave people in there because, you know, in essence, the emergency is not over. They deserve houses. These guys have promised big and actually haven't delivered. Uh, Todd, thank you very, very much. And I've got to say, I wasn't aware uh, previously um, yeah. of that 10% of the country's homeless are living in Rotorua that has 1% of the population. And there's no Sean, way... Sean, one more thing yeah. I think you'll enjoy. Uh, in my questions to Chris Hipkins, the police minister, I said to him, um, uh, how many uh, people from the National Gang Register, the register yeah. the police use as intelligence, how many people the National Gang Register are in homeless motels in Rotorua? His answer is, we don't know. The police don't know where the homeless motels are. Chris, just come to Rotorua and have a look. Your police cars are parked outside the most of the time. Yeah, well, I've just, I'll just read you a, uh, a text I got. Sean, I live in Rotorua. Our CBD is full of gang members and nutters. Shoplifting is rife. The cops, well, don't care, this person says. They have no presence in the CBD. We all, all know these people are not from Rotorua. A friend recently bought an abandoned storage. Uh, well, that, I'm not too sure that might be conspiracy. But there we go. That's the sort of stuff yeah. And when we talked yeah. about this last week. I thank you very much for your time this morning. Pleasure. Please keep us in touch as to, as to how this is going because it's not just a Rotorua problem. I think every community uh, knows that this uh, isn't working uh, for the vast majority of New Zealanders. I thank you for your time. Todd McClay, National MP sure. for Rotorua. And, yeah, that is an amazing stat. 10% of the country's homeless people live in Rotorua and they only have 1% of the population. That's not, if that's not going to stuff your town... And, look, I'm not getting down on the homeless people... Each individual will have their own circumstances and challenges. Not all will be choir boys or girls. Um, but the solution that the current government has to homelessness is causing massive social disruption and degradation in urban areas. That cannot be denied.